Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lions TV and today I'm bringing you guys a transfer daily video. Now, I've got a few stories to cover today but before I start the video please, if you haven't already by now, please press the bell notification button and stay tuned to all things Blue Lions TV. But yeah, getting straight into the first big official story, yes, finally after all this time of waiting, Emerson Palmieri is officially on this day, literally 30 minutes ago a Chelsea player. He will be wearing the number 33 shirt. His total value is going to cost up to 25 million. Of course, it's 80 million plus another 7 million on top in additional bonuses. And he has signed a four and a half year contract. And yeah, here's a few photos of Emerson Palmieri and he's looking quite dapper in that suit. I'm not going to lie. But finally, we've got the backup potential replacement to Marcus Alonso. You know what? I'm going to be releasing another video comparing both players. It's going to be coming out later this week. It's going to be a big one with footage and everything. So you guys are definitely going to enjoy seeing it. But I'm actually quite pleased with what I've seen. I have watched a few games that I've able to uh, find on Reddit. Uh, you know, sometimes I go on Reddit. I like to speak to some of the fans to uh, get an idea of what types of games to watch. For example, what were his best games? And I've watched a few, seen a lot of highlight clips, spoken to a lot of people. I'm actually quite happy with the signing. Now, originally, I didn't think I would be, but I think that actually the Chelsea magic has worked on this one. We do have a good history of signing very good defenders, especially ones that no one really rated. Two recent examples were Aspilicueta and Ivanovic. So, Emerson is going to join that list. And I think with the qualities he brings, that dynamism, I like that he's a very confident dribbler. He looks to take on this man. He doesn't need support on the left-hand side to bomb forward. I'm thinking that for 23 years old, potential to improve, that is quite good business, in fact. But I'm gonna move on to the next story, and that's about Olivier Giroud, and he's gonna be officially joining us tomorrow. The club have agreed an 80 million pound bid, bid, an 80 million pound fee for Olivier Giroud. And of course, some people were quite scared during the start of this day because reports were coming out that Chelsea actually turned their attention away from signing Giroud, and we're instead looking at Llorente. But I'll tell you right straight away now why that was never ever going to be the case. Well, the first thing is, is that Arsenal are desperate for Aubameyang. Now, why are they so desperate for him? Because they can't afford to miss out on the top four. They need Champions League football. The amount of money they've already missed out on by not being in this year's Champions League is ridiculous. This is why they're investing so much to guarantee themselves of another top four spot. But it's going to be hard. Aubameyang is the difference between reaching the Champions League and not reaching it. And I told you guys yesterday that Arsenal were 20 million short off of Dortmund's evaluation. And of course, by selling Olivier Giroud, with Fe which Fegger himself already stated that would be the case if a replacement came for him, they've made up that 20 million difference. Now they have the money to buy him. Giroud's in London right now. All Dortmund have to do is sign off the fee, and that's it. And really, the Giroud signing was key to this. Now, of course, I'm a very objective person. Have to give credit to Marina on this one. I'm giving her credit because even though I do criticize her for her negotiation skills, let's be honest, a lot of times it comes off. But I just think personally, sometimes she can be a bit more flexible in regards to certain transfers. But she was she did the exact right thing for this deal, you know. She had to let Arsenal know, and I'm not even surprised that it got leaked out, that we were interested in getting Lorente because Arsenal are going to get scared then. Why are they going to get scared? Because they needed that money from the Giroud sale to obviously push through the deal for Aubameyang. So of course this was in our best interest to play hardball, scare Arsenal a little bit to get the demands we want because originally Arsenal wanted something steeper like 35 to 30 million for Giroud which is never ever going to happen. Now we're going to get him for 18, originally we offered 15 million, so it's still great. So yeah, you guys, Olivia Giroud will be a Chelsea player tomorrow. He's in the match day squad with Arsenal, but again, you know, Arsenal own him still. He is an employee of the club, he is working, he has to do what he has to do. I don't think he'll play any part in this game if I'm being honest, because they can't afford for the Aubameyang deal to drop off, especially when Oba's already here. So I expect to see him tomorrow. Now let's give me my thoughts and opinions. Again, you guys, I keep saying this all the time, I'm not really too happy at target my striker. Do we really need that? Of course, due to how we play, as I've made this point so many times again, we limit ourselves to the attacking players we can have at this club. Now, I'll give you guys an example. There's this guy who plays in Argentina called Latoro, I think I just butchered his name, uh, Latoro Martinez. He plays for Racing Club, 20 years old. He's a short, 
nimble, low center of gravity, fantastic dribbling, similar to like a Aguero, Gabriel Jesus type of striker. Now, they're the type of players I would love to see the club invest in. Sign these types of guys early that have the potential to be world class, especially in conjunction with playing in the Premier League where players of that nature do have a lot of space and joy to play in. That's the type of player that you sign for 20, 25 million. He becomes a 30, 40, 50 million pound player in the future. They're the type of players I like us to bring in, but with how we play, we can't bring in that type of striker because one, we need a striker that's adept at doing all things on the ball. That's to be very multifaceted, able to be strong in the air, hold off defenders, drop deep when he needs to, have pace, and we limit ourselves to those types of poachers. For example, Michi Batshuayi is a poacher. Now that Giroud is going to be coming to us, that's going to free him to move to Dortmund. And again, this is why Arsenal couldn't afford to let the deal flop because Dortmund wanted to bring in Michi. But I think Michi's going to do fantastic at Dortmund because, again, Aubameyang people say he's a target man. No, he's not. He plays on the last line of the defence. All his goals, like 95% of his goals, came inside the 18-yard box. He's a poacher. And Dortmund create chances for him. And all he has to focus is on getting inside those dangerous areas and finishing moves. Mitch is the exact same type of striker, obviously not as fast, but Dortmund's style of play is really going to suit him. And in turn, by playing consistently, he's going to improve overall as a player. So who knows? Hopefully, he can go on another 18 months alone, which I'd be happy with. Let's say in the next 18 months, he comes back a much more complete, better player. I think it's only a win-win situation, in my personal opinion. But with Olivia Giroud, I've got some final things to state. Now, you guys, of course, since I've started this channel, I do a lot of networking. I managed to meet a lot of great people, you know, some journalists, some people involved in the football industry, etc, etc. Like I told you, Amish Masunda follows me on Twitter. I'm not going to say if you've spoken or not. But, <laughs> but uh, what I'm trying to say is, is that, you know, due to what I've obviously created, I've been fortunate enough to get some of the insider scoops and certain things. Of course, I don't get everything on the day. It happens all the time. A lot of times I'm hearing stuff that might be a week or two old, but again, that's not been reported just yet. You guys would have known a few of the stories that I've said that we've been linked to, like your crouches, whatever. It comes out two weeks later in the press and you know what I mean. But again, I've been told that Olivia Giroud had a falling out with Arsene Wenger. He was desperate to leave the club. He wasn't happy, of course, because he wasn't playing as much, but again, it's that typical footballer thing where they get annoyed for some reason. In a way, you know, you've been a first-team striker for how long? You haven't set the league on fire. It's understandable why Arsenal are going to look at alternatives. I don't, you know, I just think it's ridiculous by Giroud, but he hasn't been happy with him. They fell out. He doesn't, didn't like that there was a lack of ambition at the club when he was there too. And in a way, he's been desperate to leave, so he's very happy moving to Chelsea. And another thing too is that he feels very comfortable and confident that he could potentially dislodge Morata and be that first choice striker for the team. So that is fairly interesting to see. Of course, I think he's gonna do very well because the attributes he has are exactly the types of attributes that Conte likes in his target men strikers. And with Giroud, even though he's not a world-class forwards, and even though me personally, again, I feel that he's, you know, he's kind of like an older version, older, slower version of Morata. He's the type of guy that misses all those big chances anyway. He doesn't finish any of them. So we're not really improving the team, really. We're just getting a guy that's just going to maybe suit the system a bit more. Hopefully it yields some results. But, you know, with Giroud, honestly, I'm not too excited about this whole signing, if, if I'm just being serious. Of course, he is 31. Jerry's going to be way more flexible compared to Jacko. Of course, Jacko, as I kept saying, it was the fact he had a family, they just settled. He didn't really want to leave in the first place. It would have taken a ridiculous contract for him to be comfortable moving. Giroud is living in London. It's easy for him. He doesn't have to relocate. He can still live where he's staying at. And of course, he's playing for a club that will challenge for things. And he can play in the Champions League because he was playing in the Europa League and he's available for that. So this is why Conte is even happier now. And this is why it's okay for Michi to leave on loan. So expect to see Giroud sign tomorrow. I'm just praying that we sign him before the game starts tomorrow because if it's late, then I can't go to the game because I have to make a video and that's going to upset me because I want to go. And anyway, you guys, just a few more things. I'm going to be talking about Johnny Masunda next. Now, it has come out today that 
The reason why Masunda did end up going to Celtic was due to the amount of money that Celtic paid for the loan transfer. For example, Celtic paid 6 million euros, plus they're going to be paying all of Charlie Masunda's wages 100% in full. That's 45,000 a week. So at the end of the 18 month spell, it's going to cost Celtic 9 to 9.5 million euros for the loan fee of Masunda. Now that's a ridiculous amount of money, especially for a club like Celtic who aren't even earning the player and they can't really profit off him at all. And again, as you guys know, and as I keep stating all the time, the reason why this stuff happens all the time and why it's so difficult for a lot of our young players to get very good loans is because one, a lot of times they get priced out because the club don't like the loan fee, uh, interested clubs have offered the club, other clubs can't afford to pay all the wages, other clubs want to have uh, options to buy at the end of the loan spell, etc, etc. And this is why so many of them you see like your Bogus at Birmingham, your Bakers at Middlesbrough. It's not morally right in my opinion, but I'm just hoping there's going to be a clause in that contract similar to when Salah was on loan at Fiorentina. He managed to wriggle his way out to sign for Roma. I'm praying there's going to be something similar like that because then that's when Masinda can really push on. And I think Masinda is already a very strong character where I think he wouldn't even care about the hate he'd receive from Celtic fans if he did leave the club like that. And I think he should. And just one final thing, just a little short snippet on Rian Mahrez. Yeah, it's come out that Man City have made a £50 million bid for him. Uh, of course, Leicester want more. It's coming out they want £90 million for him. Now, why am I talking about Mahrez? Because you know what? We were close to signing him on the last day of the transfer window. You know, you guys know I did that ill-fated tweet where I say that he was in the Chelsea Harbour Hotel. He was. He was in the Chelsea Harbour Hotel. The clubs were negotiating. The deal fell through. Yes, we knew that Mares and his agent had left. Reports are coming out that they were in Paris. They were in London talking to Chelsea. And the reason why the deal didn't go through is because Leicester are notorious and they're known for being very difficult to negotiate with. They're one of those types of clubs that will happily change the frame and negotiations of a transfer, literally just like that, and you'll start from square one the next day. So that made it even more difficult. And another reason why there wasn't much emphasis to really go in hard for Mares was the fact that Conte wasn't necessarily fussed whether he got Mares or not. <laughs> And that's because Conte was happy with Willy and Pedro and he felt that he had enough players and Mahrez wasn't really a priority signing for him. A bit short-sighted, again, that's the type of players I want to see playing for the club, just like you do. It would be ridiculous if Man City were able to bring in Mahrez, but you can't count it against them. I know a lot of fans are going to be saying, oh, why are you even talking about them? We can't compete on their level. Well, this is why I get frustrated because if you see the money that Man City have invested in, they've been investing on defenders and they've spent hundreds of millions on that. And why are they doing that? Because they don't have that spine or that stability at the back. Now, what's one thing that Chelsea have? We've got that spine in our defence and that stability with Kante as well. We had that platform where you could have invested heavily on better players. And I'll say it to the end of the day, instead of signing the six, seven mediocre players we did sign, I'd have been happy to sign three world-class players, keep a lot of the youth players that were out on loan at the club, and then we'd be a much better team and better squad. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to end today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm the NEFC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you guys tomorrow.